A disturbing discovery near a southern Kentucky creek. Someone found human remains. Now state police are trying to figure out who the person was. Big storm system out across the Plains states ready to take aim at the bluegrass state. That means an increase in the severe weather threat for your Saturday. And I'm breaking it down coming up. And Lexington's police chief and mayor meet with the family of a delivery driver who was murdered on the job. The latest on the search for his killer. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Palumbo. Enjoy today's nice weather while you can because it won't last. It's a sunny afternoon with temperatures in the 50s and 60s across the area. This is a live look at downtown Lexington. It likely will look a lot different tomorrow with a chance of severe storms. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking the threat in the First Alert Weather Center. Chris? Yeah, the threat is still well back to the west of us, Jennifer. A big storm system we've talked about now for the past several days, beginning to gather a little steam and Roll its way toward the east. Now, tonight's severe weather threat is still well to the west of the Bluegrass State, into parts of the plains and all the way into the deep south. Though we're starting to see some of those clouds firing up this afternoon. A little light rain across western Kentucky. We'll get in on some of that very late tonight and early tomorrow. But on Life First Alert Defender, as of now, as you can see, there's absolutely nothing going on. Go about your Friday evening plans. You should be in very good shape. It's once we go into tomorrow, we're going to notice those rounds of showers and storms that will begin to come at us from west to east. So your severe weather threat really is going to wrap up heading into the day tomorrow. Rounds of storms will roll on into town. We will get some heavy rainers early in the day, catch a little bit of a break into the part of the afternoon, let's say 1, 3, 4, 5 o'clock or so. Then as we go into late afternoon toward the evening, Severe thunderstorms, a possibility, and the farther south that you go in Kentucky, the greater the threat for even a couple of tornadoes. Local flash flooding will be possible as well as these storms as they roll through here will contain a lot of heavy rain, and that flood threat would especially be increased for areas that get in under repeat showers and thunderstorms. Now, Jennifer, when I come back in just a few minutes, we're going to show you the latest hour by hour forecast that will track those individual showers and thunderstorms, and I'll highlight the specific areas that have the best threat for severe weather and tornadoes heading into your Saturday. We'll see you in 15 minutes, Chris. We are tracking the investigation into the discovery of human remains. A mushroom hunter found the remains overnight off U.S. 25 near Callaway Branch in Rock Castle County. Investigators tell us they've likely been there for years. WKYT's Phil Pendleton has the latest details from the scene in Livingston. It's our top story at four. Well, people who live around here tell me that at one point in time, this area was used for logging and timber production, but in recent years, it really has not been used for anything. Right now, Kentucky State Police want to know if this area was used either to kill someone or to dump somebody's body. A man hunting mushrooms found the bones that were scattered just up from a creek. The area is about 100 yards off a field down from the embankment from US 25. Police say the bones and some clothing were found Thursday. They believe they may have been there more than a year. It wasn't a full skeleton, but part of the skull was found, meaning dental records could be used to make a positive identification. Police say it'll be several days, maybe weeks, before they know more. Right now, we're going to go sift through our missing person cases, see if we can come up with something that might, you know, match, you know, what we've located so far. Uh, we're going to wait till the medical examiner can identify whether it's a male or female, uh, age, cause of death, and things, and then that will give us a narrow it down to where we can start or begin in our search. We're going to have a lot more coming up at five o'clock, including the shock and reaction among those who live around here. But for now, in Rockcastle County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Police say at this point they believe the remains are from just one person. Remains found in central Kentucky have now been positively identified. The Anderson County Coroner says the remains found by hunters last May are from Justin Smith from Indiana. He says Smith had been implicated in a mail fraud scheme out of Indianapolis. Smith told his family he was going to Kentucky to meet a woman he'd met online. Ten days after he left, the coroner says Smith called his estranged wife and told her he was in the woods in Kentucky. He told her his cell phone was dying and he was worried about the mail fraud charges. We'll have the latest on the investigation from Anderson County coming up on WKYT News at 4.30. And that's just one of the stories we're working on for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott is in the newsroom with a look at some more of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, 
Jennifer, five days after his murder, the family of a pizza delivery driver continues to look for answers. 22 year old Salahuddin Jitmood was found stabbed to death last weekend in an apartment complex on Trent Circle. Today, Jitmood's family met with Lexington Police Chief Mark Barnard along with Mayor Jim Gray. They're asking police to conduct a thorough and vigorous investigation into who murdered Jitmood because, as of right now, no one has been arrested. On Wednesday, we talked with religious leaders who said they had reasons to believe Jitmood's murder was a hate crime. There are some indications from, you know, the incident itself that it might be a hate crime, and we need for that to be uh, addressed. Coming up on WKYT News at 5, you'll hear from Jitmood's family and what they've learned from the meeting with Mayor Jim Gray and the Lexington Police Chief. The jury in the trial for a Lexington woman convicted of killing her boyfriend has recommended a 40 year sentence. A jury in Northern Kentucky found 24 year old Shayna Hubers guilty of murder late last night. Hubers admitted she shot and killed Ryan Poston in his Highland Heights home in October of 2012, but claimed it was self defense. The latest in that case ahead on WKYT News at 6. That is a look at just some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. Now to stories making headlines across the nation at four. Baltimore's mayor is pleading for peace in the wake of anti-police protests. The demonstrations follow the death of an African-American man in police custody. Stacy Cohen has the latest. As protesters continue to pound the pavement, clashes between the crowds and the cops appear to be growing. A police car was swarmed, objects reportedly launched, and at least two people arrested for disorderly conduct and destruction of property. And still, no more details about the death of Freddie Gray. I've been recording. The 25 year old died Sunday, one week after a confrontation with police. At some point, Gray suffered a severe spinal injury, which led to his death. A rally set for Saturday centers on demands for information and arrests. His dead body is right now ready to be buried and ready to be funeralized and memorialized. And still, the mayor of this city can't even get a report from her own police department. The big question surrounds this van and what happened inside it that left Gray in a coma. The Baltimore Police Department has suspended six officers and promised to wrap up a preliminary investigation by next Friday. Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake has asked for an independent investigation. I recognize that there's frustration over this investigation, but I want to be clear. There is a process, and we have to respect that process. A process that is unfolding far too slowly for many. I'm Stacy Cohan reporting. Freddie Gray's wake will be Sunday. His funeral will follow on Monday. The family has set up a GoFundMe site for donations. President Barack Obama is ordering a full review of a January drone strike on an Al Qaeda compound in Pakistan that killed two hostages. The president has taken full responsibility for the strikes and apologized to the families of American Warren Weinstein and an Italian aid worker who were inadvertently killed in the mission. In a statement today, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs extended condolences from Pakistan, saying the deaths underline the, quote, risk and unintended consequences of the use of this technology. The chairman of a House committee investigating the 2012 Benghazi attack is calling Hillary Clinton to testify at two public hearings next month. The first would focus on the... Clinton's use of a private email account and server while she was Secretary of State. The second would be on the attack itself that killed four Americans, including the U.S. ambassador to Libya. A lawyer for Hillary Clinton says she's prepared to answer questions publicly regarding both issues as soon as possible. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. A record-breaking end to the week on Wall Street. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ both with record closes. The NASDAQ closed at 5,092, the S&P at 2,018. The Dow was up 21 points at 18,080. Today is the global launch of the Apple Watch, but the tech giant is playing hard to get. There still won't be any Apple Watches in the Apple Store. For now, they're only available in a small number of upscale boutiques in cities such as L.A., Tokyo, and London. You can buy the watch online at Apple's website. Pre-orders begin shipping today. 
Hard cider is making a huge comeback. Sales of the alcoholic drink are exploding, and companies are scrambling to satisfy consumers' growing thirst. Marley Hall has details. It's a hard cider life for Jahil Maplestone and Alexandria Fisk. It's just a drink that's easy to drink. It's dry, it's refreshing. Last October, the husband and wife team started Descendant Cider Company, New York City's only cider brewery. We knew that the market was growing and there was opportunity out there. According to Beer Marketers Insights, sales of hard cider jumped about 65% last year. In the last four years, sales increased 500%. That's insane. I mean, few industries experience that sort of like wildfire growth. Major breweries are also cashing in. The best-selling cider in the U.S. is Angry Orchard by Boston Beer, maker of Sam Adams. Beer and spirit specialist Josh Bernstein says hard cider is the fastest-growing beverage in the beer category. So hard cider really isn't beer. No, not at all. I mean, hard cider is apples, plain and simple. So simple that 200 years ago, homemade hard cider was the most popular adult beverage in America. But prohibition and the rise of beer pushed cider to the side until recently. Why has hard cider become so popular? I think it's a fantastic alternative for people that don't want beer, that don't want wine. It's just sort of like happy middle ground. This year, Descendant Cider Company is on track to brew 10,000 gallons of hard cider. Marley Hall, CBS News, Queens, New York. Because hard cider is made from apples and not barley or wheat like beer, it's naturally gluten free. I mean, directly from Broadway to Lexington, Sister Act is taking over the Lexington Opera House this weekend. And it looks like our Deanne Stevens may have joined the cast. Let's check in with Sister Stevens. Hey, good afternoon, guys, from the Lexington Opera House. I'll tell you the things we do for our little out and about segments here at the Lexington Opera House. I've joined the cast of Sister Act because I don't want to miss out on the fun. Have you seen all of these videos that they've been doing uh, to promote this show? Lou Ann Franklin is with us from the Opera House. You guys are having a ball with oh, this one. It's have fun with the nuns, and we <laughs> want everyone to come out this weekend because Sister Act arrives tonight. First performance at 8 p.m., two shows on Saturday, two on Sunday. This is going to be so much fun. You have nuns running around here everywhere at the Opera House. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. We've been all over Lexington. Yes. The past month, we've been at the high school basketball tournament. We've been at Rupp on the Rupp floor. We've been out to Coors Light, Clark Distributing. The nuns have. The nuns mm. have, yes. Uh -huh. And you can see all those videos on Facebook. We have had a blast promoting the show. Talk about the show because it is a fun show to promote. It is so much fun. Um, this is the story uh, that we've all seen in the Whoopi Goldberg movie, right. and it's the story of Dolores, who's kind of a lounge singer, and she um, sadly witnesses a crime, and so they put her in a sort of witness protection uh, program in a convent, which is the exact opposite of where I could be. and where Or any of us that are probably <laughs> dressed like this right now, I'll just say. <laughs> so, but it's a, it's a heartwarming show. The music is so much fun. Think disco. Think come back and, and enjoy us all. Um, this show is just alive with music and fun. All right, get your tickets. The show kicks off right here at the Lexington Opera House tonight. We're going to give our nuns a rest. Look, they, they're, they're, they're resting. They've been all over the Opera House in preparation for the big show tonight. Two shows tomorrow and two shows on Sunday as well. LexingtonOperaHouse.com. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about preparing for Sister Act. Let's do it. The things I do for you, <laughs> my dear, for Thank you. you. <laughs> Back to you guys. <laughs> they would sell even more tickets if yeah. Deanne Stevens were a nun in the cast. You know I would pay to see that. She looks the part anyway, she looks right? Great. Yeah, she does. You're looking good out there. <laughs> It's time for Better Living, health education and consumer news that impacts your life. Bluebell says all three of its creameries will be closed for at least the next week for intensive cleaning. The ice cream company issued a nationwide recall of all of its products because of a listeria contamination. Bluebell says employees at the creameries will also undergo training during the hiatus. A new study suggests breast cancer patients with a certain gene mutation have a better chance of survival if their ovaries are removed. Researchers in Canada tracked close to 700 patients. They reported a 73% reduction in deaths for women who had ovaries removed within two years of their breast cancer diagnosis. 
The American Academy of Pediatrics says cribs are for sleeping, car seats are for traveling. Doctors warn many parents are using car seats and swings improperly, not realizing that infants sleeping unsupervised in such seats are at risk of suffocation. What you breathe may affect your brain. A new study in the American Heart Association journal, Stroke, warns that long-term exposure to fine particle air pollution can have harmful effects on brain matter, even at low levels. You now may be able to get Chipotle without ever leaving the house. The Mexican food chain is teaming up with Postmates, a delivery service, to bring burritos straight to your door. The service is available in 67 cities where Postmates operates. For more health education and consumer news, go to WKYT.com and click on Better Living. The news is just getting started here on WKYT. Here are Sam Dick and Amber Philpot with What's Ahead at 430.